Good afternoon and welcome to Burn News News and Views. I'm your host, Don Burgess, and we are very privileged this afternoon to have one of our legends of education, Dr. Duranda Green, who is uh, retiring from Bermuda College. But uh, part of the, also part of the reason why she's here, she's also being honored for Black History Month by the Hamilton Princess, along with Robert Randy and Ellen Kate Horton, whom we are going to have on Thursday at six. But Dr. Green is first, so welcome, Dr. Green. Thank you. Glad to be here. And glad to have you. All right. So why don't we go all the way back to the beginning? We'll do a complete rewind. Uh, why did you want to be an educator in the first place? Well, to be quite honest, I didn't want to be an educator. I left um, Bermuda College and then went to transfer to Acadia University to do accounting, wanted to do office administration and accounting. And um, having completed intermediate accounting, advanced accounting and all of that, I decided this wasn't for me to just be sitting around looking at numbers and pushing papers all day. So I decided that I would teach accounting and bookkeeping and um, business studies. So I went off to um, transfer, finish that Acadia and then transfer to Munson Vincent University to do my master, my bachelor's degree in education. So, and sec it was secondary education. I um, was on a teacher's training award at that point in time, scholarships from the Department of Education. And as they say, the rest is history. <laughs> what, what does it mean for you in a sense to come back to Bermuda College after you, you were away and that's where, where you sort of started your uh, college education? It was um, interesting because I had only just turned 21 years old um, when I was offered the position. I had to remind them that this would be my first position. And it was the interesting part was a lot of the teachers that I had um, had taught me were still at the college and now I was working with them. So it was um, that was a different experience working with them. And but each of them took me under their wing and. I think I became a great teacher as a result of being trained by some phenomenal teachers that I had when I was at the Bermuda College. Okay. Yeah. And uh, what does it mean for you to uh, be honored by for Black History Month by the Hamilton Princess? It's definitely a humbling experience. Um, when I first got the email, um, I had to think, um, is this for me? Um, it was, um, it's an honor. Um, to get, as they say, to get your um, smell the roses while you can still smell them. And in this case, um, having not retired as yet, um, being honored before I retire, um, that's a privilege and something that I don't take lightly. I um, appreciate the Hamilton Princess for even considering me. And it is a humbling experience. And I'm um, pleased to be honored with the Hortons, who um, the two brothers Mr. Horton, the Robert Horton was my teacher at the Barclay Institute. And um, he's also serves on the Bermuda College Foundation Board with me now. And Mr. Randolph Horton was the chairman, um, the minister of education when I was um, appointed as the president of Bermuda College in 2007. And he now serves on our board as well. So I have a history with both of them and it's an honor to be um, honored with them. Now you're having a special dinner on, on Saturday night. That's yes. all with a special <laughs> meal. Uh, what are your, you know, feel any butterflies or anything? You're going to, everyone's going to be looking at you and looking towards your speech, I assume, uh, as you give, give to them and, and what sort of maybe a hint of what you might say. Well, it's about our life and our accomplishments. So um, I'll be telling you some things that aren't in the bio that will be read. Um, some of the um, experiences that I have had that helped with those accomplishments, but um, most people don't know about some of the struggles and the challenges that go on So and the lessons learned. So that's what I'll be sharing with you on Saturday night. So you did some of the accomplishments. So let's go into some of those. Um, 
what are some of the changes you hope bring about at Bermuda College in the 16 years you've been there? Mm. And why do you think they're important? Well, the first change um, that I went through in 2010 was the accreditation. Between 2007 and 2010, um, getting Bermuda College accredited for the first time by then the New England Association of Schools and Colleges, which is now the New in, um, England Commission for um, school, um, Higher Education. We, um, that was important because even though, as I said, I left Bermuda College and transferred to Acadia University to and just did two more years. So all of my credits transferred, but it made it easier by have being accredited, it makes it easier for students to transfer to universities that we may not have agreements with. So we've had students as a result transfer to universities all over the world. Um, and that was important so that we could have our students transfer. As you know, we're the only community, the only tertiary inst education institution on the island and students have to um, go on because we don't offer four-year degrees in our outright, even though we have some partners that offer four-year degrees through us. So going on to get a bachelor's degree is important to the Bermuda College, was important and is still important, and that accreditation helped to facilitate that for our students. So that was the first. Um, then in 2015, um, going through the reaccreditation where we were able to um, be accredited for 10 years. So our next visit isn't until 2025. And as I said to my team um, at that point in time, I probably won't be here for the next one. <laughs> and so be it, I won't be here for the next one, but I'm sure they will do well. And the other accomplishments um, with um, that we've worked on together here at the Bermuda College um, since I've been president is the nursing program, which is um, again, wasn't an easy road um, we had our challenges, um, thanks to the um, late Honorable Nelson Bascom, who um, helped us with that because he believed that we needed to have a nursing program um, on island because there's a nursing shortage around the world. So to see our program um, be successful in our students, we've got over 80% pass rate in the NCLEX exam. Um, so which um, the students take in order to become a registered nurse, an RN. So that has been um, a highlight for me. Um, the other highlight, the major highlight, there's, and there's been several highlights, um, but the one that I will say is um, significant to Bermuda College's future is the establishment of the Bermuda College Foundation. And um, three times the charm, three times lucky, they say, because I presented it to the board three times before it was accepted over a six year period. So I'm glad um, we that has come off the ground and pleased to what the um, Mr. Barry and Mr. Medeiros and the rest of the board are doing to um, bring funds to the Bermuda College. And we're yeah. benefiting from those. Now, why is the Bermuda uh, College Foundation important? I know like at other institutions, they have endowments and, mm -hmm. and they, they have groups set up to, to help raise money yeah. for the college. Why is this important for, it even is. though it's a government? Mm -hmm. Most higher education institutions, whether they're government funded or privately funded, have a foundation. And so it's not something new for community colleges as well as four year institutions. But I do think with um, government funding um, being declining in not just in Bermuda College, at Bermuda College, but um, all over the Western world, um, education dollars are being, government education dollars are being decreased and you need to look at private funding. So that was one of the reasons why um, I put the first proposal in 2010 to the Rebuta College Board was because I, at that point we were going through, the, had just come off the 2008 recession. So it was an opportunity for um, us to look at alternative forms of, um, forms of funding. Um, also our creditors also wanted us to diversify when it came to funding. So in the 2015 reaccreditation, that was one of the things they wanted us to address was not so heavily reliant on the government. So that's probably why it was the third time um, the proposal was presented and um, it was successful after the 2015, when it was presented in 2015, 2016. Now, I know during the Quran Science Week um, recently, you, you got to show off some of the benefits of the foundation to the students. So yes. what sort of things do they get to see because the foundation was in place? 
Yeah, we had, um, well, of course, our theme lecture theater. We had um, the opportunity to have our um, lecture, a public lecture in that facility. The students got to see all the robots and um, the um, humanoid and the mechanical robot and the um, industrial robots in our innovation center, which has 3D printing, 3D scanners, and things like that in it. So they were able to see that um, in action. And um, of course, our new computer labs in our classrooms as well. So we've been very thankful um, for the Athene, Athene, Athora, Apollo, um, Athene, Athora, Catalina, and Aspen, who have um, donated the $3.8 million that was able for us to put the Career Development Center and do some renovations to our lecture theater. Yeah, I know I had some students go down there and they were really impressed by what they saw and they were excited. And some of them were thinking like, oh, I'm going to make Bermuda College my my choice. I'm so glad to hear that because that's what we want. And we're saying it's your first choice as a stepping stone because we truly believe that students should go overseas to school, get that overseas experience. But if you, um, why pay um, one thousand uh, for three thousand three hundred and fifty dollars for a course, uh, rather than one thousand dollars for the same course. Freshman English is freshman English. Right. Um, whether you do it at the Bermuda College or whether you do it at Harvard, it's in, um, Harvard University. Some people call it freshman composition. Some people call it freshman English, but it's still the same context. Like learning objectives are still the same. So, why do that when you can get it the same quality of education mm -hmm. you can get here on the island? So, I'm glad to hear that. Yes. That's always good news when they, they come back excited. Now, you did mention some of the challenges. Was any of the challenges related to you being the first female president at the college? Or was that accepted with wholeheartedness by everybody? <laughs> no, it was not. Um, I think uh, being the first female, um, it was some getting used to for some people, I think. Um, I also believe even when it comes to little things like when you're uh, making travel arrangements for a female president as opposed to a male president, you don't want the female leaving their hotel room at two o'clock in the morning to make a six o'clock flight or a five o'clock flight because it's a safety, it's, it could be some safety concerns that you have there. Um, also, being in a boardroom, because um, I'm in many a meetings representing Bermuda College, sometimes being the only female, sometimes being the only Black in the room, Black individual in the room. So, um, but I wouldn't say it was challenges. I think it was some adjust. People had to get some, um, get used to some adjustments. But um, yeah, it's um, it's been good. Now, um, what's one program at the college that you wish more the general public would know about that you think is like a hidden gem or something that you mentioned the nursing program, mm -hmm. um, but is there anything else that, that you might think sticks out in that matter? I think, I don't, I, I don't think it's one program. I just think people have to look at Bermuda College as a stepping stone and a way of um, that transition from high school to college. I'm a graduate of the Bermuda College, a proud graduate of Bermuda College, um, but I left the Barclay Institute at 16 years old. It was, it, I, it was no way I was going to go overseas to school. Um, I came from, my grandmother brought me up, so I didn't have that education nest egg stocked away, stocked away somewhere for me to go overseas to school. But I do think people have to see Bermuda College as a viable option. Um, you know, as Bermudians, we tend to think that the grass is always greener on the other side. Mm -hmm. But here, I think you can get a quad, the persons can get a quality education for a fraction of the cost and take those credits and go off and do that third year and fourth year at that university, get that bachelor's degree and use those funds that you save to go on to a, do a master's degree or do your professional qualification because most of the jobs these days, you are gonna need more. Many of them, you're gonna need more than a bachelor's degree. Right. So now, why not take that those two years, save some money during the right. first two years and put it on the back end of your education. Now you, you mentioned uh, a dual master's and you mentioned Barclay. I think like one of the fantastic programs that we have for our public school students is the dual enrollment program mm -hmm. with 
uh, Barclay and Cedar Bridge and the college. How did that come about and what do you think the success of that is? I think it's been very successful. Um, that started, I started that program when I was just prior to becoming dean. Um, um, college um, president, sorry, just prior to becoming college president, I was working with the former president on special projects, and that was one of the special projects. It wasn't accepted initially um, by the um, Barclay or Cedar Bridge, by the Department of Education at that point, because they felt that we would be taking their top students from high school. Um, so we continued pushing on, and it was finally accepted. Um, when I actually, when I was dean of um, business and hospitality here. We had our first dual enrollment students, but they were had to come up in the evening to do their courses because they weren't released from um, Barclay or Cedar Bridge to do the program. So they were here in the evening just doing one or two courses. Um, and then they would um, go back, of course, at their schools during the day, but come up in the evening and get some credits. But the dual enrollment program is a great success. It's an opportunity for students to get a feel for college. And it's not just the high flyers. There could be, as long as they're ready for college level English and math to go into the associate degree program. But we also have the technical education program, certificate for technical applied science and technology that is done down in the tech, tech hall where the students get an opportunity. They spend three days with us and two days at Cedar Bridge or Barclay. Most of them are males, but there are some females in the program as well. They get a touch of all the trades at the Bermuda College. And then in their second year, they get to specialize and they will get a certificate. And then when they graduate from Barclay or Cedar Bridge, they can come back and do the second year to get their associate degree. So they got one year free education because, well, free because the government pays for it. Um, and then they um, can come back and finish their associate degree and then go overseas to university if they choose to do that. And now, instead of coming, having to come in at night, they, they can come during the day. They come during the day. So some of them are here full time. They spend most of the time on the campus. Some are here part time. And those in the applied science program, they're here three days a week and at their in home institutions for two days. We're also partnering with we have some work academy students here as well. Um, and we're um, in discussions with other private schools to have some of their students come as well. So, All right. Yeah. Good announcements coming in the future. Then, yeah. yeah. Now, this is always a tough question to, to ask people, but um, what do you think your legacy will be? Hmm. Um, well, obviously, being the first female will be one. Um, I also believe um, for me, in any position I have, I wanted to leave the institution or the, the department or whatever I've done in life a better than what I found it. And I truly believe that for Bermuda College, it's after 16 years or after 38 years, if you want to count my whole career here at the Bermuda mm -hmm. College, and 40 if you count my two years as a student, then <laughs> um, I think Bermuda College, I've left Bermuda College in a better state than what I found it. I truly believe in the um, thing is, if you want to see, be a ch see the change, be the change that you want to see. And um, one of the reasons why I applied for the presidency was because I wanted to see some changes. Um, that's why I went into administration. And that's why um, it wasn't like I came into the Bermuda College and said, hey, I want to be president. That wasn't my goal at all. But once you see things happening and the opportunity, um, I took advantage of the opportunity because I didn't want to see some different things happen. Yeah, we, I think, um, yeah, it's not been a, a smooth road, and you, I'll talk more about that um, on Saturday, but it has been, I've had more ups than I've had downs. So and That's always a positive thing. Yeah. And we hope other Bermudians, especially our younger students coming up, can grasp those opportunities like you did. Yeah, yeah. Um, now, is there, is there a last thing you'd like to say before we uh, close out this afternoon? I just would like to see um, Bermuda accept Bermuda College for the dynamic institution that it is. We have an awesome group of faculty and staff members here that no one's going to care about your young person better than or more 
than um, the faculty and staff here at the Bermuda College. You can find no other institution that's going to care about your Bermudian um, student more than we do. Uh, I also believe that persons have to realize that it is a, a place of quality. The, the, the accreditation is something that is it's not easy to go through. They look at every aspect of, in those um, nine standards, it was 11 standards, now it's down to nine standards. They look at every aspect of the institution before um, they accredit you. And where New England is probably one of the most difficult accreditation bodies in the United States. And we've been successful in not only going through it once the first time, but going through it the second time, and we'll go through it again in 2025. So I do, I would like for Bermuda College, Bermudians to value a Bermuda College education. Um, there are many of us out there that have come through the Bermuda College, um, held in significant positions in the island. And um, I'm hoping that persons will not only attend from attend Bermuda College, but also support it. And to that, I'm talking to the businesses on the island. So just as the Dean and Thor, Catalina and Aspen have put their mouth, their money where their mouth is, um, I would hope that other presidents will do that. And that will be one of the things that I will continue to work on um, here is being a part of the Bermuda College Foundation to make sure that um, the institution continues to move and grow and um, the foundation has been laid. And I think the next president, president that comes over will take it to higher heights. And, um, but I think it's, um, it has, I've left it in a better place than what I found it. And that, that's always been my goal in any day that I do. So I've done my part. Now it's time for the next president to take it to another level. Yeah. Well, I think a lot of people would agree with you that you have left it in a better place. So <laughs> it's not more than a thing. It okay. is. So, Dr. Green, we want to thank you this afternoon for taking a little bit of time out of this busy week for you. No problem. So thank you. Right. Thank you. Okay. You're welcome. And for our viewers, as always, I've been your host, Don Burgess, wishing you a very beautiful afternoon. Thank you.